I take Adderall all the time. You guys know. So like, I'll take like a fourth of a 20 milligram pill, like five milligrams of Adderall. In my bag, everywhere I go, I always have a pill bottle filled with Adderall. Why does the bottle say that this is oxycodone? <laughs> And there's just, there's not even oxycodone in there. Like the pain pills in there were like hydrocodone. You're like an Adderall dealer in LA and you happen to run across this, hit my business email. Like I'm not a fed. Like I'll just buy some from you. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And today we are going to be talking about a YouTuber by the name of Tana Mojo. So you might recognize her. She has about 3 million subscribers ton of fans, she goes on tour, she does story time videos. And before I get this video started, like this is nothing against her or anything, like she has her own style, like good for you, Tana. But this is a video because I am concerned. I'm concerned about her prescription drug use. As you saw from that intro, um, she's somebody who enjoys her prescription drugs. And as somebody who has a mental health channel who is in recovery from a prescription drug addiction, I feel it's necessary to talk about this and whether or not Tana sees this video, I hope some of you out there can take some lessons from this and please share it with people who don't understand how serious prescription drug addiction is. Now, is Tana Mojo a prescription drug addict? I don't know, but I do know from her videos that she does abuse these medications. And remember, abuse turns into dependency, which then turns into addiction, all right? So some of the clips I took were from a video, I'll link it down below, but somebody made a compilation of Tana talking about drugs for about two minutes straight. Now, real quick, real quick, if any of you follow my channel, you've watched some of the videos I've made in the past, I don't really care about weed. If you smoke weed, like go for it. Like, yes, weed can become addictive, but with, the opioid epidemic and people dying from alcoholism and stuff, like weed is literally the last of my concerns, okay? But this is more focused around Tana's use of drugs like Adderall as well as prescription opioids. And there's also a problem with Xanax abuse. So in some of her clips, you see her talking about her prescription drug use. It sounds like her primary drug of choice is Adderall. She talks about it a lot, she jokes about it, and she has even made a video, she made a comment that if you are somebody who sells Adderall, like, hit her up. One of the dangers about Adderall is Adderall, it is an amphetamine. So amphetamine is the specific drug class, and that might sound familiar because it's not too far off from meth amphetamine okay so it is an upper it is a stimulant this is a drug people use for adhd but it can also become highly addictive now one of the dangers behind adderall and i don't know how much tana drinks but a lot of people who die from alcohol poisoning were on some type of stimulant the reason why people take adderall or use cocaine when they're drinking is because it lessens the effects of alcohol now when you get drunk that is somewhat of your body saying like, yo, something's getting introduced into my system and then there comes a point where you just pass out so you can't drink anymore. Drugs like Adderall, cocaine, meth, it allows you to drink longer and not experience the effects of alcohol, which then can lead to alcohol poisoning because your body isn't really giving you the right signals of how much you've drank. Now, Prescription opioids, I don't need to go too far into that. I've done plenty of videos about my own prescription opioid addiction. Um, these are pain medications. And I've also discussed how over 80% of heroin addicts are people who were uh, abusing prescription opioids first. Now, one of the main concerns I have with Tana is Xanax and partially because of this video right here. No, not with Xana, fucking mojo driving. <laughs> Xana. Tana, I hope you're high and zanned out right now, please, no. <laughs> <laughs> Why does everyone think I would drive a car on Xanax? Because you <laughs> are. <laughs> you are. <laughs> on a complete side note, please no one put this in anything. I'm so high that I can't build a car movie because I'm high than this movie, but anyway. <laughs> All right, so in that video, there are a few things that we can unpack from this, okay? So one of them is her being high on Xanax, okay? The other one is her friends, and we'll get to the friends in a second. Now. I wanna make it very clear, the reason why I have this concern, and I've made another video, which I will link in the description above, is that people don't talk about it, but more people are dying from prescription drug overdoses than heroin and cocaine combined, okay? Prescription drugs are not a joke, okay? People are dying left and right. Now, one of my concerns with Tana is, I can see her 
falling to the same fate that Lil Pump did not that long ago. Lil Pump, for those of you who don't know, he was an, uh, a, a rapper and he was 21 years old and he died from a Xanax overdose. This is something they talked about in his videos and his music and things like that. And he died at 21 years old, okay? Xanax is not something to mess around with. This is a tranquilizer, it is a depressant. There are so many people who die from Xanax overdoses constantly, constantly, and it's not being talked about. That's part of the issue with what's going on since we have so many different problems with drug addiction is that the opioid crisis is kind of this uh, cloud over all the other issues that are going on. But don't get it twisted. People are dying from Xanax overdoses by the masses, okay? And Tana is a young woman. She has a whole career ahead of her, okay? She has so much that she could do and this goes into my next concern. My next concern is the people she's hanging around with and these people who are enabling her and think it's a joke and think it's funny. Like, again, referencing back to Lil Pump. Like, this was a young guy, and in that culture, there's so many people who are abusing Xanax as well as other drugs. One of the biggest issues is that it's part of the culture, and people think it's fun. People think, you know, we're just partying, it's okay, da 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 da. But the thing is, when you wake up and find your friend dead, Dead, it's no longer fun. And another issue is, is that when somebody overdoses, a lot of people, they just scatter. They don't call the paramedics, they don't call anybody. This person dies because they didn't get the help that they needed. So when I see Tana Mojo's friend say, oh, here goes Zana Mojo, like, I'm like, what, dude? Like, what? Like, this isn't a joke. Granted, he might be on something himself, but as you saw in that video too, like, her whole crew was kind of egging her on and letting her get behind the wheel. And that video ended with this. Why does everyone think I would drive a car on Xanax? Because you <laughs> are. Why would everybody think that? I like your dogs. Yeah, she's definitely on Xanax. <laughs> I crashed the car. I crashed the car while we were driving. Are you mad? So, the video ends with her crashing the car while she was high and her friends in the back seat laughing and messing with her. And like I said, granted, they're probably all on something, but we need to start taking this a little bit more seriously. Like it's 2018, nobody in that car has a problem with money. Like take an Uber. If you are messed up, take an Uber. Because thank God it was only wrecking the car, but this could have been hurting one of the passengers, it could have been hurting somebody else randomly on the street, an innocent bystander. Like, these stories happen constantly, where people run into bus stops, where they hit people walking across the road, or you have people who are traumatized for the rest of their life because they were messed up behind the wheel and they, they, they kill one of their friends. Like, it's not, it's not worth it for this fun party lifestyle, you know what I mean? Like, just keep in mind, I will link to another video in case you missed it. I just did a video of me putting makeup on for my girl Tati Westbrook. Disgusting. Right? And like, we have fun sober. Like, there, there is this cultural issue where we're told that one of the only ways to have fun is by getting drunk or high, and that's absolutely not true. So, Tana, if you watch this, or anybody else watching this, watch who you're hanging out with, okay? And if you are somebody who is enabling somebody who clearly has a problem, you need to really check yourself. Like something I have to ask myself every single day is, am I gonna be able to go to sleep at night if this person dies? If that answer is no, then I need to change my relationship with that person, okay? So lastly, my last concern with Tana is that she has a very young audience, very young audience. Now, again, my channel is not to talk about the other topics that she talks about in, on her channel. Um, iDubbbz did his own thing on that, but like, this is specifically about drug use. Like, there's an issue when people are in a position to be seen by young, impressionable children. Because children often associate a person's lifestyle with their success, and they try to emulate it. So some of you may not realize this, but if you remember, back in the day when Lindsay Lohan was running amok, getting DUIs every other day, 
there was this time when she actually got a DUI and she was wearing an American apparel hoodie. The very next week, the very next week, that hoodie was sold out all over the country. So what we can deduce from that is, Kids are not associating the consequences of alcohol or drug abuse. They're looking at this and they say, oh, well, Tana's famous, Tana has money, she's doing all these things, well, maybe I should emulate that. If I want to follow in her footsteps, I need to do what she's doing, okay? So kids are not necessarily putting those two things together. And they're not supposed to, they're young, they're kids. That's what us adults are here for. Now, some of you watching this, you may say, well, that's the parent's job, that's the parent's job. Now, you are preaching to the choir. I am somebody who believes that you should know what your kids are watching. My kid loves YouTube, he loves YouTube, but I know what he's watching. And if there is even something that might be questionable, he and I have a conversation. But to pawn the whole thing off on the parents is not being responsible. Like, even Logan Paul mentioned it in his interview that he recently did after all the backlash from his uh, suicide video. What would you like to say to them? I'm gonna be honest with you, Michael. I think, I think parents should be monitoring what their children are watching more. Um, I, <laughs> every parent I meet whose kids are under the age of like 12, I go, hey, you, you let your kids watch my stuff? And they go, yeah, what am I gonna do? Like, yes, absolutely. Parents have a responsibility, but we, we unfortunately live in this society where people keep bouncing responsibility from one person to the next. No, when you decide that you wanna be a person that millions of people are watching, you are also basically signing a moral agreement that you are going to act in a way that is going to help people rather than hurt people. Like, it's a very selfish, self-centered way of thinking of saying, oh, well, it's not my fault if people watch me and they see what I'm doing. Like, that is extremely selfish and self-centered. So when you get to that position, you have to look at the way you're living your life and realize that people are watching you. If that's not something that you want, then you shouldn't go on that path towards being a recognized person that young people might be watching. So there's responsibility on all ends, from the parents to the actual YouTubers, as well as celebrities and things like that. But anyways, like I said, this video is it's purely out of concern. It's purely out of concern about Tana because I don't want people to wake up and be surprised by what actually happened because we see it happening, okay? So if people in her life do love her and care for her, they are going to intervene. So if you're watching this and you don't even know Tana Mojo and you've watched this video, think about who you might be enabling in your life by simply staying quiet. Okay, but anyways, anyways, I'd like to hear your thoughts. If you know Tana, I'd like to hear your thoughts uh, about her content and stuff like that, about her drug use, go ahead and leave a comment down below. But anyways, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, I'm always making videos about mental health, addiction, and everything else that might be able to help you out, okay? So make sure you click the subscribe button or you can click the top right there, check out some other videos on this channel. Thanks for watching, be kind to each other. I'll see you next time.